welcome uh, this is uh, the module uh, the second lecture for module 3 which is uh, constitutive relation 1 so here actually what i plan to do is to understand uh, the physical meaning of this elastic module specifically i am uh, considering here for the isotropic case because we have not yet uh, uh, done anything uh, anisotropy uh, case. So, uh, elastic moduli, what is the physical meaning of this elastic moduli that we see uh, for some of our laboratory test. For instance, uh, the Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, all those things uh, we have, uh, uh, we know all those things from our uh, strength of material knowledge itself or the basic mechanics knowledge itself. So, uh, why, how we do these uh, thing or how we test these things uh, probably all of us know this, uh, but uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, have a uh, re-look on the physical meaning of the uh, elastic moduli. So, uh, to start with, so different laboratory tests uh, generally uh, we do on the uh, to find out the elastic moduli for the um, isotropic material. Uh, for instance, uh, most of us have done the tensile testing or the uniaxial testing. So, um, the basic objective uh, or uh, for this test is to find out the uh, Young's modulus and then the Poisson's ratio. So, um, because as we know the isotropic material can be characterized by two material constants. So, which is uh, E and nu uh, the or the Young's modulus or Poisson's ratio. So, uh, uh, if we uh, just simply test a uh, um, specimen uh, under tension. So, which uh, what I mean by under tension is that uh, you uh, apply a tensile force this side and apply a uh, tensile force this side. In actual case in the experiment what we do we fix this bottom and then uh, probably we give a tensile force. So, now uh, if we consider any element in general here, so it will be under only one directional um, stress. Uh, so, this is the applied stress along the this side. Now, um, uh, if we uh, look carefully or if we know now that what is the uh, stress tensor corresponding to that and if we take this as a x direction, so uh, the stress tensor will be only this. So, this uh, quantity will be uh, non-zero and all other quantities will be 0. Now, uh, once we uh, start the test, uh, so uh, we can take the load data, area, lateral and longitudinal strain measure. So, that means the strain along uh, this side, strain along this side, both we can measure with the help of a strain gauges. So, uh, now uh, in if uh, from the Hooke's law, if we assume this is a Hookean material or if it is a linear elastic Hooke's, uh, Hookean material, then we can write its stress strain relationship which is essentially this. So, this we know from our previous uh, class. So, this is the E x, E y and E z. Remember all these things are in void notation. So, now uh, since uh, if we uh, find out stress tensor, so if I now uh, substitute the values of this stress tensor in this equation. So, if you see that sigma y, sigma z everything is 0 and uh, so uh, finally, E x becomes sigma x E and E y becomes minus nu sigma x by E and E z becomes minus nu sigma x by E. Now, uh, probably uh, when uh, you did not uh, uh, learn multidimensional uh, Hooke's law or generalized uh, kind of Hooke's law, then probably you have uh, one dimensional Hooke's law is that uh, stress is proportional to strain which you can see directly from this equation. Now, it is not only that because uh, right now we are considering this material as a 3D material. So, it will have its poisons effect in other two directions. So, which will essentially represented in terms of strain is this which will be dependent on the applied stress sigma x or the stress sigma x. Now, uh, if we uh, want to calculate 
what is these modulus, so how should we uh, uh, approach. Now, if we uh, for the other uh, cases of uh, strains that is the all shear strains, because we assume that uh, there is no shear strain in this, uh, no shear strain or no uh, imperfection in the uh, material or the uh, material uh, geometry or the specimen geometry, there is no imperfection, uh, something uh, very unrealistic though, but uh, we assume if we assume this uh, or if we believe this, because um, in any uh, material you will naturally observe imperfection and any uh, uh, geometry will have its uh, uh, any geometry will have its imperfection and any natural material will have its uh, inhomogeneity. So, uh, if we discard those issues and then the for instance, if we want to do it in a lab, uh, so you have to really uh, apply the load very uniformly and then the uh, base where you fix uh, the specimen that has to be properly uh, fixed, uh, so that there is no uh, these things. So, all those conditions if we uh, discard all those uh, experimental situation, then uh, if we assume that all these uh, things are uh, rightly or perfectly done, then uh, we, this specimen would not experience any shear strain. So, which will be which is evident from this. So, now, um, considering this that if we write uh, the strain tensor, train, strain tensor is essentially the diagonal uh, uh, tensor. Uh, contrary to this, uh, if, you, if you have seen stress tensor, stress tensor is only the uh, first um, element or uh, first element is uh, non-zero, other elements are 0. So, um, now, uh, uh, so, uh, so this uh, becomes uh, uh, very easy uh, for uh, now uh, we can find out the elastic uh, modulus uh, from this. So, uh, which is essentially sigma x by E x and so stress by strain. So, essentially which is the Young's modulus E. And similarly, the uh, lateral uh, uh, if we uh, take the ratio of the lateral strain that is the E y and uh, E x uh, lateral strain means the um, transverse strain by longitudinal strain E y by E x, then I get the Poisson's ratio. Now, uh, you see uh, these uh, Poisson's ratio can also be obtained from the other directional uh, strain that is E y by E z by E x, because we assume that uh, that is uh, perfect material and perfect uh, geometry. So, this way this is how we calculate the uh, stress uh, is uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So, it becomes clear now that Young's modulus is essentially the slope of the uh, stress strain curve. And similarly, the um, Poisson's ratio is essentially the uh, 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 slope of the uh, two strains. So, uh, this um, uh, uh, is uh, when we do a simple tension, but when we um, uh, do a pure shear test. For instance, uh, if there is a uh, cylinder which is again we assume all those perfect cylinder perfectly aligned axis and give a torsion or a um, uh, uh, um, uh, if we give a torsion pure tor uh, kind of torsion where there is no other stresses are generated. So, then the surface of this uh, um, cylinder will experience only shear stress. So, this experiment also probably we know from our uh, strength of material knowledge. So, if we write again its stress tensor, so it becomes only tau becomes 0, uh, non-zero and other quantities becomes uh, 0. Again, this, uh, this is a thin cylinder. So, uh, all those uh, assumptions are uh, I am taking that it is correct. Now, uh, from a generalized Hooke's law, I can write its strain and stresses. So, if you write uh, the um, 
you know, all longi longitudinal stresses uh, strains. So, which implies that uh, all longitudinal stress, uh, strains will be 0 and only the shear strain corresponding to x y um, is non-zero, which is essentially tau x y by 2 mu. Uh, mu is essentially the sh uh, shear modulus. So, is, uh, it is essentially tau by 2 mu. So, one component of the shear strain is non-zero. Now, uh, mm, if we uh, mm, see the mm, strain tensor, uh, similar to the stress tensor, strain tensor will also uh, have the uh, non-zero component that is uh, epsilon x y and epsilon uh, or E x y or E y x. Now, uh, if we uh, take the shear strain uh, by shear, st uh, shear stress by shear strain, we obtain the shear modulus mu. So, again we can comment from that the shear modulus is essentially slope of the uh, shear stress versus shear strain curve. So, this is how we uh, determine um, the shear modulus in the lab so um, or in the laboratory. So, now uh, another test uh, probably not very common is that hydrostatic test. So, um, uh, hydrostatic tension or compression. So, uh, if we now take a simple rectangular block and then uh, compress from its all side. So, cubical uh, one cubical element is subjected to um, all uh, from all side its compression is given. Now, um, if there is uh, um, the geometry is perfect and then cube will have equal axial stress and no shear stress. So, all these uh, loading application and geometry is very perfect. So, uh, keep always in mind that these are not physical uh, situation, but uh, 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 we assume and uh, our assumption uh, within a care of careful experiment is uh, very well matched with the uh, experimental result and theoretical results. So, uh, now if we uh, take all uh, sides as compression which is minus p and then uh, find out the strains uh, E x, E y, E z and E x y, E y z and E z z, it turns out that only um, uh, uh, longitudinal strains are non-zero, but uh, shear strains are 0. So, um, uh, uh, now uh, if we want to uh, further process this uh, uh, thing, what uh, we can obtain is the strain tensor. So, the strain tensor will look like this which is coming from the uh, generalized Hooke's law. Now, if we have this cube element is volume V, then we can simply uh, write its volume is L B H. Now, um, uh, if we want to change, uh, if I want to compute the change of this volume d V, so I have to take uh, derivative with respect to or the increment. Um, with respect to each of uh, L, B and H. So, which I did. So, B H, D L, L H, D B and L B D H. So, now if I uh, want to compute the volumetric strain D V by V which is D L by L, D B by B, D H by H which is essentially E X, E Y, E Z and which is essentially this quantity. So, you see this is the sum of all those uh, all these strains right this this this. So, it is the trace of the trace tensor now a strain tensor. Now, um, uh, that means volumetric strain is essentially the sum of the uh, strain tensor right. So, uh, if I now define the um, volumetric stress versus volumetric strain, so which I can simply uh, volumetric stress is uh, P and then uh, if I uh, divide with uh, uh, volumetric strain, then I can write this. Uh, 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 I can write this quantity and this quantity uh, seems to be constant 
and uh, this is known as the bulk modulus of the system. So, um, what do we uh, learn today? We learned shear modulus, how to find out shear modulus and how to find out bulk modulus of the system. So, you see uh, all these shear modulus even uh, from your strength of material knowledge, the shear modulus mu is we write that 2 into uh, uh, sorry E by 2 into 1 plus nu. So, and bulk modulus also we write E into uh, E by 3 into 1 minus 2 nu. So, uh, you see uh, these quantities are not independent quantities. Why? Because uh, all can be expressed with the help of E and nu. So, uh, this is important thing to consider because uh, uh, we are considering the isotropic material and isotropic material will have only two independent constant. So, uh, except that uh, um, these shear modulus and bulk modulus that can also be treated as uh, independent uh, even uh, th that means that uh, E and nu can be expressed in terms of K and mu. So, um, now, there are some common materials which will have uh, for instance steel uh, the Young's modulus is to uh, 107 approximately GPA and if we take the Poisson's ratio near about 0.3. So, bulk modulus will come like this. So, similarly concrete and copper uh, these uh, can be found out. Um, from the experiment. Now, it, uh, one important point to remember here is that we are only considering the isotropic material right? and homogeneous material. So, let us see uh, some numerical examples. Uh, so, suppose there is a train a strain rosette. Uh, strain rosette is essentially a uh, set of uh, uh, strain gauges which is uh, placed uh, with a certain orientation uh, to get the linearly independent strain measures. So, here there is a, there is a um, three strain gauges uh, apart uh, with the 30 degree um, angle. Now, uh, the strain laser rosette uh, A, B and C measure strains are uh, 300 into e to the power minus 6. So, um, this has to be the e to the power minus 6. So, this is essentially 300 into e to the power minus 6, right. So, um, or t actually this is 10 to the power minus 6. So, uh, um, now uh, these are uh, uh, these are strain rosette and then find the stress of a uh, material point. A state of stress of a material point, any material point at that uh, point O. So, now uh, given lambda or the Lamy constants, first Lamy constant and second Lamy constant mu is given. Now, um, uh, since this is a planar problem, so I uh, assume that only E x, E y and epsilon E x y will be there. Now, uh, but uh, these E x, E y, E uh, x y have to transform according to the direction of the strain, because direction is not uh, parallel or the uh, oriented along x y z uh, axis. So, any x dash uh, which is making uh, theta with x axis from our knowledge of strain transformation, we know uh, E x e, e, e x dash is E x cos square theta, E y sin square theta and 2 E x y sin theta cos theta. So, these are from our uh, strength of material knowledge. So, so uh, in case of E a um, which is um, uh, cos 60 degree, sin 60 degree and then 2 uh, E x y uh, is uh, cos sin 60, uh, cos 60 and finally, it becomes this equation. So, similarly for E b uh, also we uh, calculate this. Now, um, once we are done with this, similarly we calculate E c uh, and then solving uh, these three equation, we calculate E x, E y and E x y. So, uh, we calculate all strains. Now, once we know all strains, we can just uh, substitute in the Hooke's law, which is essentially uh, um, sigma i j is lambda uh, uh, trace of E plus 2 mu uh, of 
uh, E. So, this is the tensorial form probably uh, 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 we have discussed in the last class. So, lambda trace of E uh, into I plus uh, 2 mu E, right. So, trace of E is a scalar. So, that is why it is uh, represented via uh, a uh, free index uh, so E k k. Now, um, once we are uh, we know these uh, strains, we can just substitute these strains here which is um, epsilon k k. So, uh, it is a 2D problem. So, uh, I have to do only epsilon x and epsilon y and then only e i j uh, which is epsilon x. So, I can find out uh, sigma x. So, similarly sigma y I can find out uh, which comes out 64.16. So, tau x y is again 18.5 uh, MPa. So, this is um, a simple problem. Uh, which uh, uses the basic Hooke's law and uh, uh, um, compute the stress state. Another uh, basic problem that uh, uh, probably we have solved in strength of material course or the uh, solid mechanics course, if the displacement function is given, then um, how to compute strain and stress. So, the problem is uh, um, uh, some dis displacement functions are given u v uh, w and it is uh, asked to show that this is a state of pure bending. Uh, that means, pure bending means uh, there will be only bending stresses uh, and no other stresses will be there. So, uh, in a x y plane. So, if you look carefully what is the uh, bending uh, stress in x y plane. So, sigma uh, x is non-zero uh, has to be uh, one of the stress has to be non-zero. Mm, so, an m e i l are constant. So, if you now uh, use the stress strain or the uh, strain displacement relations which uh, you have already learned in module 2. So, um, if I use those relation, so if E x is del u del x and E y del v del y, E z del w del z. So, if I just substitute these expression or these displacement functions here uh, and then compute uh, the strains similar to the longitudinal strains, I can compute the uh, shear strains. So, which is essentially uh, which is essentially comes to be 0 for the E x y and E y z and E x z are 0. So, from this displacement function we compute the all strains. Now, once we know the strains similar to the previous problem I use uh, the Hooke's law. So, which is uh, lambda uh, trace of E plus 2 mu E and then uh, if I substitute the component wise this becomes the uh, sigma x and uh, if I uh, now uh, becomes the um, uh, compute the sigma y and then tau uh, x y. So, now putting this lambda plus mu which is the relation between uh, the mu and lambda uh, uh, mu and uh, um, um, lambda is the first Lamé constant and mu is the uh, shear modulus. So, if I sum it and represent it with Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio, then uh, the first Lamé constant is turns out to be this and then we can say that this is a uh, pure bending because sigma x is uh, only non-zero. Uh, non so, uh, with this uh, it can be said the problem is uh, pure bending problem. So, um, today I stop here uh, and in the next class um, we will learn uh, the strain energy function. Thank you.